When I was first asked to give my views at a bodybuilding seminar back in 1977 at George Snyder's famous Olymp Olympus Gym in Philadelphia, I was flattered as I was just beginning to enter the ranks of world-class bodybuilding. Guys like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo had been giving seminars for some time and were dominating bodybuilding at, uh, at that time. So I didn't think anyone would really accept my radically different views on training and dieting. Well, how wrong I was. That initial seminar was a resounding success, and since then I've conducted scores of them all over the world. As I continued my seminars, they became more polished, and I noticed they began to take on a certain thrust. That is, they seemed to aim at something. What it was I discovered that I was trying to do was paint a new picture of bodybuilding, one not based on commercial interests, selling barbells and dumbbells, and protein product where I might have a vested interest in distorting bodybuilding reality, but one based on some simple scientific facts gathered from genetics, exercise physiology, and nutritional science. And I never expected anyone to accept what it was I had to say because I've garnered a few titles. If what I have to say isn't valid in and of itself, and doesn't appeal to your reason and common sense, then it is worth nothing in the long run. So this is a seminar not to guarantee you a Mr. America physique or a 20-inch arm. But what I'm offering with this seminar is a new perspective, which will change your entire outlook of the sport of bodybuilding and hopefully help you to reach the limits of your individual potential in the shortest time possible. Whether that potential happens to be as great as Arnold's or only good enough to become the best built man in your backyard. The first step to a new perspective is to develop a realistic long-term outlook at your bodybuilding career. No one ever became Mr. America overnight, or with one year or two years of training even. And it's not very likely you'll be the first one. Anybody with any training experience has recognized the fact that adding muscle tissue beyond normal levels is a seemingly impossible process. And hopefully Mike Mentor is going to give us a little secret or two on how to hasten that process. But as a matter of fact, the growth process is probably even slower than you realize. I think that's one of the most important things for you to recognize is just how, how slow the growth process is. In many cases, the dietary indiscretions of bodybuilders as well as the, the training errors they make are the direct result of a failure to recognize just how slow the growth process is. If a bodybuilder is expecting to grow a pound of muscle a week or a pound of muscle a month and he's not seeing those gains, then well, he's going to become hysterical and start training more often and increase his protein intake and so forth. But if you can develop a firm grasp, if your mind can envelop totally just how slow this muscle growth process is, and it is my firm belief that you will be less inclined to commit a lot of the ridiculous dietary errors and training errors bodybuilders are so accustomed to committing. Just how, just how slow is the growth process? Well, would everyone here agree to the fact that gaining even 10 pounds of muscle a year is a tremendous achievement? Anybody here grow more than 10 pounds of muscle this year? Not 10 pounds of, of body weight, that's easy. 10 pounds of pure muscle. It doesn't sound like a lot, and it isn't a whole hell of a lot. But look over the long term, five years, and that's how you have to look at your bodybuilding career over the long term. Nobody became Mr. America in one year. Gaining at that rate of speed in five years, you would gain 50 pounds of muscle. Try to picture what 50 pounds of beefsteak would look like on your dinner table, and then picture that amount of flesh distributed all over your body as muscle. It's enough to transform the average adult male weighing 165 pounds into a veritable Hercules at 215 pounds. As a matter of fact, only two of the 1979 Mr. Olympia competitors weighed more than 215 pounds. Looking at the career of Danny Padilla, one of the, one of the most massively muscular men of all time, when Danny started training 10 years ago, he weighed 120 pounds. 10 years later, just recently, Danny won the Mr. America and Mr. Universe titles weighing 165 pounds. If you look at that, Mathematically, it breaks down to 4.5 pounds of muscle gained a year. That sounds almost like nothing when you look at it on a daily basis. But again, Danny is one of the most massively muscular men of all time. This may offer some hope to those of you who have been making similar gains. 
I hope you are beginning to gain a better idea of just how slow the development of muscle tissue is and the acquisition of a top level physique. So 10 pounds of muscle mass gain per year has gone being beyond the reach of most of you. But let's use that hypothetically. Let's say we can gain 10 pounds of muscle in one year. But we don't think in terms of a year, in blocks of a year, or in blocks of five years. We think about daily progress, daily workouts, and so forth. And if you think 10 pounds of muscle growth in one year is slow, it's, it's unbelievable how slow growth is on a daily level. If you were to gain 10 pounds of muscle a year, what would that come out to on a daily level? 10 pounds in one year. How many days are there in a year? 365. Any math whizzes in the audience? I figured it out already, so say it. 0 0.027 pounds of muscle gain per day, which is the same as 12 grams, or less than half an ounce. That's not enough to register on the body weight scale. Yet how many of you weigh yourself every day looking for some kind of weight gain? If you're seeing weight gains every day, then you're not gaining muscle, what are you gaining? Fat. If you were to gain 10 pounds of muscle a year, again, which we all agree is more than what most of us are capable of, you're not even going to see a one pound gain per month. So it's almost ridiculous to ever weigh yourself. What you should gauge your progress by is simply your appearance. But think of how minuscule this is. 12 grams of muscle gain per day. That's if you're gaining 10 pounds of muscle a year. It's ridiculous, it's slow. So do you, you have a better idea now how just how slow the growth process is. Again, this is hypothetical. If we were to gain 10 pounds of muscle a year, averaged out on a daily basis, it would come out to less than half an ounce, which is not going to show up on the scale on a daily basis. So if you've been weighing yourself to see, to see weight gains every day, you know, stop doing that. Because you're not going to gain muscle on a daily basis unless you started out from a grossly underweight condition. If you started out grossly underweight, it's very easy to normalize your body weight. But once you reach a normal body weight for your height, then adding additional muscle mass seems almost impossible. And 10 pounds a year is, again, a considerable achievement. Actually, 5 pounds a year is not bad.